if you follow my channel, you know I reviewed my share of Surface devices, whether it be the Surface Pro 7 and Surface Pro X from last year, or the Laptop 3. So when Microsoft announced the Surface Laptop Go, a mid-range Surface device that won't break the bank, I was excited but with guarded optimism, and I understood there were certain areas they had to cut costs in order to keep the price down. But it didn't stop me from picking one up last week and putting it through its paces. And I'm glad I did because as the old adage says, never judge a book by its cover. I really like this device and we'll find out why. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. Coming up. Like these type of videos? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. And make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post a lot of the updates. And why not check out my Discord server? It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the video description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. Want to become a member? Hit that join button below. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Microsoft. I'm not being sponsored by Microsoft. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before its release. This unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Microsoft. Okay, let's talk about pricing, and this is important because it does start at $549.99, and that gets you the Core i5, 10 Gen from Intel, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. Although it's eMMC storage, it's gonna be slower than SSD. That is the model I would stay away from. The mid-tier model, which will give you eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, and that is SSD storage, that comes in at $699, that's $150 more. That's probably the one you should go with because for $899, $200 more, that will give you 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. But now you're starting to approach Surface Laptop 3 territory, and there are some key differences between the two. I happen to have that 899 model, and that would not be the one I would get, even though it does have more storage. It's still a lot more to pay than that mid-tier one. And again, closer to that Surface Laptop 3, that is, of course, a more premium high-end device. And if you're gonna spend $899, I would recommend buying something like the HP NVX 360, running the AMD Ryzen processors. That's gonna give you better performance. That's gonna give you better value. And it's an overall better laptop. But having said that, being a big fan of the Surface line, you do get a lot of the things that this gives you that you won't get in something like the NVX 360, such as a three to two display aspect ratio, things like that. The better keyboard is gonna be on this. So the Surface line does bring some premium high-end features, even though this is not the top of the line Surface device. And with that out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment, but before we do that, we also get some documentation and warranty information as well. You also get, of course, your power adapter. It uses a Surface Connect as far as charging this laptop, but you could also charge via the USB-C port. We'll get into that a little bit later. You also get the extension cord as well. Now, the first thing you'll notice holding the unit for the first time, and what really surprised me is how high-end this feels, even though it's not all metal. The upper body and the keyboard deck, of course, is metal, but the bottom is made out of a polycarbonate resin, and to be honest, doesn't feel cheap in any way. This feels like a very high-end premium device. Now, I opted to get the ice blue, and I'm glad I did, because this looks really sleek and modern, a very high-end look to it. In addition to the ice blue, you could also get it in sandstone or the traditional platinum we've come to know throughout the Surface line. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. You gotta love that. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice, of course, is the keyboard. And you know that I love the Laptop 3's excellent keyboard. This has an excellent keyboard as well. Good tactile feedback, good key travel as far as the keyboard is concerned. It's also a nice quiet keyboard. Again, one of the best parts of these Surface laptops are gonna be the keyboard. This is no exception. Now, one omission here that is a glaring omission, in my opinion, is the fact that this is not a backlit keyboard like you'd get with something like the Laptop 3. Now, of course, this is a cost-cutting measure that Microsoft 
as employed here. And I'm kind of disappointed in that, especially if you're going for the higher end tiers, you would expect this laptop to have a backlit keyboard, not something we get. So that is a negative in my book. And another reason to stay away from that entry level model is the fact that that doesn't have a fingerprint scanner as the mid tier and the top tier model does, as you see here. And the reason that's important is that there's no Windows Hello camera on this laptop. And I absolutely love the Precision touchpad. It is super responsive. Two finger scrolling is buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. They did an excellent job with this glass touchpad once again. All right, let's talk about the display. What we're looking at here is a 12.4 inch pixel sense display with a resolution of 1536 by 1024. And for those keeping score, that's 148 pixels per inch. And that is the dubious distinction of being the only Surface device with less than full HD resolution. Now that sounds bad on paper, but in reality and in real world usage, it's really a nice display. It's a bright display, it's sharp, it's crisp. You wouldn't know that it is slightly less than a full HD resolution. Again, some people are going to knock it. I was going to knock it at first, but then as I use this laptop, the more I used it, the more I realized this is a very nice display. And despite it's lower than desired resolution, you do get some really deep black, some really good contrast, white points, and it does have good color accuracy, and it covers the color gamut really well. You're looking at 95% of sRGB, 70% Adobe RGB, 71% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 65% NTSC, making this a pretty decent choice for those content creators that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And when it comes to screen brightness, I measured 324 nits, making this a good choice for indoor and outdoor use. And that's been pretty good. I also like the fact that it's not too much glare and reflections as we saw with the Laptop 3's display that I reviewed earlier this year. So they made improvements on that front. And I love the three to two aspect ratio we find on these Surface devices. You get a really much taller display with less scrolling, better for productivity. But you will notice the black bars on the top and the bottom when you're consuming media such as Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. And you also get a multi-touch display. One area they did cut a corner on, this doesn't have Surface Pen support. And to me, that's not really a deal breaker because this is a clamshell design. Had this been a two-in-one detachable or two-in-one convertible, that would be a different story. So not having pen support to me is not a deal breaker. So the bottom line is don't be scared by that lower resolution stats on this. You're going to get a really nice display, especially for a mid-tier laptop. I think they really did a good job on this. So don't knock them for this. They can knock them for other things, but not the display. So this is the front facing camera on the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go and it's a 720p 30 frames per second webcam. Uh, not as good as the ones we've seen on other Surface devices so this is a little bit disappointing. I understand they're cutting some corners for cost saving measures but uh, I was hoping for a little bit better here for late 2020 especially during this pandemic. Uh, not the worst I've ever seen certainly not the best but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk about the port selection and we'll start off as we normally do on the left side where you get one USB-A port, which is of course great to see, a USB-C port that does data charge and display out. Yes, you can charge with that and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side is one port and that is of course the Surface Connect port. That's where you can charge this laptop with the included Surface Connect adapter. One thing of note, there's no SD or micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Now, when it comes to the sound, it's not going to blow you away. Let's be honest. It's not the best sounding, not the loudest. It doesn't have the best bass or mids, but it is a pretty decent job when it comes to the audio. Now, there are no speaker grills on the Laptop Go. Rather, the sound emanates through the keyboard, through the laptop, and produces, again, middling sound. Again, if you want to have the best sound, use a pair of good headphones or Bluetooth headphones. The Surface Laptop Go is a mid-tier laptop, and what we're seeing here out of this Core i5-1035 G1 is mid-tier performance, and I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. This is not gearing towards those that are looking for the high-end AAA gaming laptops. This certainly is not that. This is a good secondary laptop. This is a good laptop for students or people who don't want to break the bank and want to get decent performance, and that's exactly what you'll get. Check out the PC Mark 10 test. Check out the Geekbench scores, the Cinebench, all respectable for a mid-tier laptop not going to blow you out of the water but then again that's not what this was designed to do 
Now, as far as gaming is concerned, as I mentioned, not a gaming laptop, but you can play some of the older titles. If you lower the settings, you'll get some playable frame rates. It's not going to be the best when it comes to higher end games, of course. Then again, there's no dedicated GPU. We're not even looking at Intel Iris Plus graphics. We're looking at integrated UHD graphics, which are sort of run of the mill. So don't expect to do AAA titles on the highest settings. That's just not realistic. But for things such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. Consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, again, all worked well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my unit has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Pretty good reads. Uh, writes could be better. I'd say they're decent, but definitely not the best I've ever seen. Now, as I mentioned, I never received a review unit from Microsoft. I had to buy this unit with my own money. And having said that, I never received any press material from Microsoft regarding whatever the battery stats might be on this. So I wasn't really sure how big the battery was, but I did run Battery Bar Pro. And that told me that there's about a 42 watt hour battery in this. And when I ran my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, it did seven hours and 37 minutes, which is a little bit disappointing considering it does have a lower resolution display compared compared to other Surface laptops. Now they do supply you with a 39 watt power supply that uses that proprietary Surface connector. You could also charge via the USB-C. If you're gonna use the included adapter, it's gonna take a little bit more than two hours for a full charge. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go? And the answer is it depends on whether or not you're looking for a mid-tier laptop that won't break the bank, but gives you all the qualities of a Surface device that you've been looking for. That means a three to two aspect ratio. That means that outstanding keyboard and touchpad. That means that great build quality and great looks. It all has that and more. Now, the things that I'm not crazy about, of course, is the less than 1080p display, the no face recognition camera, no keyboard backlight, which is a big no-no in my book, middling audio quality, and subpar battery life. If you can live with those limitations and you want a Surface device but don't want to break the bank, this is the one to look at. The bottom line is I'm pleasantly surprised on just how much I like this mid-tier laptop. I'm going to give this a score of 87% making the Surface laptop go worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Surface Laptop Go? I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised not only how premium this feels, it's got a beautiful metal lid, it's got the metal deck, and of course the polycarbonate resin on the bottom that does not feel cheap at all. This is a, a really good feeling device. And they also were able to keep the weight down by using that polycarbonate on the bottom. And again, you're not gonna be looking at that very often as you'll be placing this on a table or a desk. Now, the build quality is first rate. Uh, everything we've come to expect with the Surface line. Now, as far as performance is concerned, this has a 10th generation Core i5. This is not the latest 11th gen, but then again, mid-tier laptop, with the pricing to be commensurate with that, we're not expecting Tiger Lake on this. Uh, let's save that for the Laptop 4, which I think is probably gonna come next spring. Having said that, 12.4 inch display, not a full HD resolution, just slightly below that. Uh, at first, I was a little taken aback by that, but having used the device for the past week, I have to say, I was wrong. That is a beautiful display. Yes, it's not the highest resolution display, but it doesn't need to be with a 12.4 inch diagonal display. You're going to really see how beautiful the vibrancy of the colors are. It covers the color gamut pretty well. As you saw, 95% sRGB, which is really good for this price point. And it also has very good color accuracy, really deep blacks, everything you'd want. Now it is a touch display, worked well, very responsive. However, no pen support. You cannot use your Surface Pen with this as you would a Laptop 3. Not a deal breaker for me, not a big deal, simply because this is a clamshell. Most people are not gonna be taking notes or sketching out artwork on a clamshell device. They'll leave that to a two-in-one or a convertible to do that. So this is not the one that you have to worry about to use a pen. But again, just for you, so you know, it doesn't have pen support. Battery life was a bit disappointing on this, especially with that lower resolution display. I was expecting uh, 10 plus hours. I got a little bit more than seven and a half. Again, depending what you're gonna do, you could probably get anywhere from seven to eight hours. And for most people, that is perfectly fine. Now, as far as the sound is concerned, there are no speaker grills on this. 
all the sound emanates out of the keyboard. And I would say it's uh, average at best. It's mediocre. Uh, I wouldn't be using this to fill up a room. It's good when you're using it. It'll get the job done. If you want really good sound, of course, invest in a good pair of headphones or Bluetooth headphones. That will definitely be a better audio experience. All right, let's talk about the price. As I mentioned earlier, starting price of $549.99. That is the one to stay away from for a few reasons. Number one, that one doesn't have SSD storage. It only has 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, four gigabytes of RAM, which is not good here in 2020. It is unacceptable. It's a non-starter as far as I'm concerned. It also doesn't have the fingerprint scanner that you'd get on the mid-level one, which comes in at $699, or the one I have, which comes in at $899. Now, the difference between the $699 and the $899 is uh, the difference in storage. One's $128, the other one's $256. I would stick with the middle one simply because if you're going to spend $200 more, there are better values all out there on the market. I showed you the HP Spectre X360 or the Surface Laptop 3, if you can find it on sale, will be more premium and high end with more features. But if you can get that middle one, $699, that's not a terrible price considering you're getting a Surface device with the three to two aspect ratio, with the premium keyboard and that overall premium Surface feel that definitely gets the job done. And if you're willing to live with a certain amount of sacrifices that Microsoft made on this device, then it definitely is a definite buy. And I actually like it as a secondary device. I like it good for a student or somebody who just doesn't want to break the bank. And for 2020, during this pandemic, that's something we're definitely looking for, not to break the bank. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.